What's up, everybody? Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jamin John. Reading from Thralls of Metal! Appropriate. And we have yet another album review for you, and one that we've all been eagerly anticipating. Hell, we just got done ranking this band not too long ago. Yep. We are going over the latest album from British metal legends, metal gods. Iron Maiden! Close! Oh. Black Sabbath! Oh, In the right. ballpark, closer! Yeah, the other one, Led Zeppelin. Farther away, uh, no, it, farther it's away. Colder, colder. Uh, the, the Kinks. Wow, way off. Oh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Judas Priest. <laughs> yes. With their new album, Invincible Shield. This comes out on the 8th of March on Epic Records. This band formed in 1970 Jesus. in the United Kingdom. This is their 19th album overall, I believe. Wow. <clears throat> and I don't know how much more of an intro you really need for this band. They are kind of the pioneers of heavy metal in general, or at least one of them for one damn of, sure. We went through all their albums and ranked them, except for this one because it wasn't out yet. And uh, yeah, their last album, Firepower, kind of uh, blew away everyone when yep. it came out and was like, wow, man, these guys still have a lot of gas in the tank. And going into this one, I was kind of wondering how much more gas they have in the tank, and then we started hearing singles, and it was like, I think the tank is still full. Yeah, I, I don't think they've depleted their gas supply at all. I, I think they've driven around a bunch, but somehow they still have gas. Did they convert to electric? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe it's a hybrid? It could be. Judas Prius. Judas Prius. You're fired. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. No. That is good for the environment, but not for anything else. <laughs> Once again, I notably was not a big Judas Priest fan like at all until we did the ranking. And after we did the ranking, I was like, all right, all right, I've messed up all these years. Obviously, I am stupid. Uh, not here to argue. Right, and while that's somewhat debatable, at least in a current sense, yeah, I, I love this band. After Firepower especially, I couldn't wait to see what they had next. I also was not a big Priest fan growing up, you know. The radio, another thing coming, living after midnight, uh, breaking the law, those type of things. You like them as much as you like Bob Seger and the like. I was more of a fight fan, actually. I liked Grinder and Painkiller, those tunes, and you know, the the rough priest. And then as my taste grew, I learned to like mm -hmm. higher register vocals and stuff. And then Firepower came out and I was like, Jesus Christ, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I. Why? And then I went back and big priest fan and I honestly really wasn't expecting too much from this. I was like, Firepower's gotta be they're seven sixty-nine-ish, seventy-ish, sixty-nine. <laughs> um, they're like, you know, right there and the and the and uh, who knew? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a good chunk of this band is in their seventies or late sixties, and you, you just don't necessarily expect that anymore. Yeah. And Maybe that's foolish now because we've heard a lot of older bands come out with killer albums. We went over the last Saxon album. It was awesome. Yeah, that album ripped. Yeah. Loved it. So, I don't know. Maybe our expectations need to evolve a little bit. But I tell you what doesn't need to evolve is Judas Priest sound. Yep. One track after the other. It's just a nonstop barrage of just awesome riffs, great songwriting, and... Compared to Firepower, I feel like this one has like a lot more classic nods. Yes. And somehow like more aggressive. And they sound like a young, hungry band, which is weird 19 albums in. And for being as aged as they are, they sound like they did back in the painkiller days. Like it's, it, you can't tell the difference if you don't know. As old as they are, they should be hungry for softer foods. <laughs> So we open with the song Panic Attack. It's very unlike anything else in the record. <laughs> Opens up with droning synths and big 80s drums. Sounds very, very, very familiar. A very intentional rush nod. I, I believe even the band said that, oh yeah, no, we, we took a little bit of Tom Sawyer energy and kind of put it into the song. But the buildup is awesome because you have these big synths, the electronic drums, and then behind it, you get the riff. I was like, okay, all right, I can kind of feel... It, it, it starts getting a little louder. Yeah. A little bit louder now. And a then, little bit louder now. that riff hits, and then Rob starts belting out just his amazing vocals. He it, is it, 74, 73? It, something. Yeah. Mm. And, and he sounds just as good as he did 45, 50 years ago. Yeah, like, come on. It, freaking Come on. nature. Yeah, Metal yeah, guy. Yep, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's what happens when a talented person lives. There's not too many of the uh, heavy metal old timers that 
well, we're just now seeing it, making it up to these these old ages, like, you know, the, the stones is kind of the marker for rock and roll, right, of how old you can live <laughs> and still be embalmed yet breathing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess Priest and Sabbath, all four of those original lads are still breathing, as far as we know. Immediately within, like, the first three tracks, there is just a... A palpable energy to mm-hmm. this, and it wasn't as though firepower didn't come out swinging. Oh, it definitely it did. Absolutely did. But there's something about this again, like the kind of like going back and kind of putting a fresh coat of paint on some like old tropes, especially the serpent and the king. Uh, what a throwback to I would say specifically screaming for vengeance. Yeah. Rob is in his high register mm-hmm. almost that entire song too. But he is. Belting that shit, dude. So that the, there's so much power behind his voice in that song, especially in the verses. It's insane, and the chorus is so catchy. Oh, so catchy. Honestly, this whole album is just catchy on so many levels. Not only are Rob's vocals still absolutely incredible, it's got catchy riffs everywhere. In fact, I would Ooh. say almost every riff on here has just got a very precise, neat, catchy hook, Mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, very anthemic, which there are tons of anthemic songs in here, Gates to Hell, Mm -hmm. Trial by Fire. Trial by Fire is Mm -hmm. a rousing Mm -hmm. epic of a song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or a little bit more sinister and moody, like you get a little bit of that on Devil in Disguise, or uh, Escape from Reality has a little bit more of a doomy kind of hook to it, but all the riffs are catchier than hell. Mm -hmm. All the grooves are tighter than hell. Mm -hmm. Scott Mm -hmm. Travis, Still a hell of a drummer. Yes, indeed. But the lead work on here. <laughs> man. I wrote great lead on every song. Yeah, every, every song. single song. Like, like it's really tough to go through this record and go, well, that was a crappy lead because it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't every happen. single lead on every single song is amazing. Yep. My only complaint is on the liner notes, I was kind of hoping they would say which one was Glenn and which one was Richie, and it doesn't. So I'm kind of left to guess, but you can hear clear lead trade offs uh-huh. everywhere. And there are a ton of leads. Mm-hmm. Like Panic Attack is a giant lead section, and while you're getting towards the end of the song, they start stomping. It gets more aggressive for that last chorus, which that you know, mm. last chorus <laughs> on every song. Yes. They want to make sure that last one's felt. You think it's the end, and then boom, you have like another <laughs> twenty seconds where they're just mm-hmm. shreddy leads again. I was like, wow. Yep. As, All right. As God is my witness, mm. that lead is insane. Devil in Disguise has this really awesome, mm-hmm. tuneful, like, emotional lead to Topics. it. And not just, like, flat-out shreddy solos. There's tons of just classic harmonies on here. Mm. The title track has got, like, just, again, a very classic 80s pre-sound, Defenders of the Faith. Uh, it's it's just kind of got that vibe to it. Gates of Hell, again, mm-hmm. has these big, triumphant, you know, harmonies that kind of just add to the already awesome vocals. The chorus in that song is just a very triumphant one. Like, whatever you were going through that day, you put on that song, it's like, you know what? I got this. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. Piece of cake. As fast and chuggy as some of these songs are, most of the songs are, uh, you get a song like Crown of Horns, which is the the epic contemplative ballad, uh, retrospective, like, I gotta think of my feelings. Yes, I know them now. It's uh, simple, very effective, catchy as all hell. Yeah, great leads. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then enough with the slow shit. And as God is my witness, comes in and thrash, chug, tight as a dolphin. Oh you gotta whip your hair to it. You can throw a chair at it, duck a chair. Maybe the lyrics are a little cheesy, but I don't give a leather clad fuck. This song might be like the heaviest song that Priest has ever written. I mean, there's definitely room for an argument there. It's just notably more aggressive. The riff itself, again, almost more thrash metal mm-hmm. than anything else. Like, honestly, you could have thrown Bobby Blitz's vocals on top of that. Yeah. I would have 100% believed that that was an overkill song. Yep. It's only when it shifts on the chorus to that more epic, triumphant vibe that, you know, like, all right, it doesn't sound like, you know, the rowdy Exodus-style ripper, even though this is produced by Andy Sneap and he doesn't change the settings he doesn't ever. Need Don't need to. But he's got a good setting overall. Yeah. But I like the fact that you get this good variety in terms of like almost every point in their career, except for Turbo and then the you know the Ripper stuff. We don't we, we don't talk, talk about, about that, that much. Way. Like Giants in the Sky, 
honestly, that kind of takes me back to like 70s priests, like a little bit of stained class and sin after sin. There's a little bit more of like a doomy vibe to it. Mm. And I absolutely love the riffs on it. Once again, choruses, mm -hmm. uh, they just know how to flat out nail them. But they give you like the big finish on this album. It closes mm -hmm. epically. Mm -hmm. And epic is kind of like the baseline mood on here. Like everything feels invigorated. Uh, the song Devil in Disguise is a, probably the slowest song on the album. It's just got a nasty old rock and roll swagger. Mm -hmm. I have got to get a bunch of singles and see a nice young lady do a little dancey dance on a little poly pole to this tune. She's got to wear a cowboy hat. She's got to yes, wear a cowboy, a cowboy hat. hat. Oh my God. Something leather and spiky, obviously. Yep. Yep. You know. Duh. Yeah, yeah. The riff on that song is... Nasty. More contagious than COVID. Uh, it's just got this sleazy hook to it. The groove is just great. It's a nice kind of slow down from the pace of the first three tracks, too, because mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. first three tracks just come in and yeah. remind you, well, why you love Judas right. Priest. Remind you who they are. Yeah. Judas Priest is in town. Here you go. This one kind of, you know, like brings a little bit of that like bloodstone energy to it. Again, it kind of slows it down. There's a really great like kind of moody break in it. There's one little spot in it that I didn't necessarily like was where the robotic vocal refrain of the uh, yeah. chorus was like, uh, you know what? Rob's been like kind of killing it on here. I don't want to hear like robot Rob. I don't want so <laughs> cyborg Rob to replace awesome current Rob. That's no, I don't want that future. It was, it was AI Rob. Well, they're gradually <laughs> letting you know that he's been replaced. Well, at least he looks the same, I'm cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, he, he looks like a, a metal Santa Claus. I'll sit on your lap. <laughs> I just want more albums for Christmas. I want more metal. Now, as far as any negatives, I did have a couple of gripes. First off, the song Escape From Reality. That song opens with one of the nastiest riffs, I think, that's on the whole album. Yeah. It is just dark and, and chuggy. And we all a, went, ooh! Yeah, yeah. Was, all of us were just like, yeah! Ooh. Little bass run on it. And the intro, that's all in the intro. Yeah. The intro is really good. But then the riff that it transitions into is nothing like that. It's and it's just kind of like straightforward, and I'm just like, eh. Yeah, I mean, it brings back the riff on the bridge. Which, know, is, mm -hmm. yeah. which is also got an awesome solo on it. Duh. It, it, it actually bookends, too. It's on the end, too. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, the, the verses, I don't know, they just don't have, like, the power or punch. Like, it's kind of... Weird. Yeah, like, like a, a groove metal song. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's not terrible, but no. I feel like you get, like, a doomy buildup. Like, you're expecting the song to be, like, more sinister and mm -hmm. menacing. And it kind of just goes into, like kind of a standard gear and kind of stays in this lane and falls the speed limit. And Sons of Thunder, while I like it, I think it's just another riffy banger, but up against the other riffy bangers on here, mm -hmm. I do feel like it's a little bit more standard, like this would be a B-side on Hellbent for Leather yeah, or yeah. British Steel. I was more distracted by the fact that Sons of Thunder is the name of the other band in Airheads, which was actually Galactic Cowboys, and I just thought that was interesting. But the song itself, it's... I guess the best way to describe it is it's a Jewish priest song. It's a hard rocking 80s classic priest song, pumping your fist, banging your head, rolling down the windows in your T-bird. The song is about riding racing Harleys or riding Harley race. Yeah, those two songs, while I still think they were good, were probably the only ones where I felt like they didn't quite gel completely. In fact, Escape From Reality, there's a section on there, Rob just sounds like Ozzy. Like flat yeah. out, and that I, I like it. I, I mean, it didn't sound bad. I mean, it sounded like Ozzy. A little tribute, but I don't know. Those two songs, one just didn't seem to gel completely, and then the other one kind of felt a little standard. And maybe if it had been like earlier on in the album, because Fair. in terms of like tracks fighting for like favorite track position on here, they're all kind of like duking it out in a royal rumble here, because like most of this album is just absolutely fantastic and uh yeah uh i kind of expected it but i i don't know like i don't know if i did like maybe you know firepower was the last hurrah and like this was a contractually obligated album i mean that very well could have been but i think if you're gonna try and release something after firepower it's gotta have some punch to it because firepower firepower, <laughs> firepower. <laughs> Firepower crushed. And what protects you from firepower? An invincible shield. So, all in all, at the end of the day, I have to give this record four and a half stars. It crushed. It was killer. There's tons of groove. There's tons of melody. The lead work on here is 
just ridiculous. And I knew it would be because it's Judas Priest. And the lead work has been ridiculous since the 70s. And I mean, that's a, a long time ago. The 70s was a long time ago. That's before they invented electricity. But yeah, there's so. riffs a million on here. Uh, high energy. I said it in the beginning and I'll say it again. It sounds like a young, hungry band. And they're certainly not as young as they once were. But I mean, it sounds like they're coming out of the gate still with something to prove. And they don't have to prove shit. They're, they're Judas Priest. They're... Like, they've already proven what they have to prove a long time ago. Yeah, great transitions, great leads, great melodies, great harmonies. The record kicked ass, and it's a four and a half for me, and I will be listening to this for a long time to come. I am going to go ahead with a four and a half, too. Uh, I love this. Part of me likes some of this more than I liked Firepower, and I love that album. There's a good balance of like fresh, kind of like raw, invigorated energy, but also tons of nostalgic throwbacks. I love the song right on here. These guys, I mean, they've had a gift for melody forever, but man, the lead work, Rob's vocals, he is in his 70s, right. and he sounds better than people... 20, 30 years younger than him, and it's ridiculous. He's a freak of nature, slash metal god. Mostly metal god. All these songs are catchy in so many different ways, whether it's a groove or a vocal pattern or a riff or a lead or just a lead harmony. These guys just know how to nail it. I think the production's great. Andy Sneap, again, I give him a lot of shit for never changing the settings, but they're good settings. Uh, yeah, if you were wondering whether or not Firepower was a good last rod and this one was going to be just like, well, let's see what they have left. They have plenty left. Uh, I'm going to jam the dog shit out of this mm -hmm. album. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Even the weaker tracks we pointed out, there's still a lot of charm to them because it's Juice Priest and I still love this band. And if they still have like another album like this in them, oh my God, I'm stoked for the next one if it happens. But yeah, four and a half stars, this album rules. Unanimous, four and a half. Good God, uh, I don't understand. I don't know how you can be British. <laughs> that's it, I don't understand how you can be British, really. I think you gotta be born there. That, oh, that's that's how. Uh, <laughs> what's with your food? I don't know. Uh, Pour beans over everything. It's, it's beans. Just, it's... This has every classic Judas Priest trope you'd want. The soaring vocals, the harmony melodies, the killer riffs, the catchy drum patterns. The production is amazing. Sneep didn't break it, so he doesn't need to fix it. Um, Fair. I don't understand. I would say God bless Judas Priest, but I think that's a weird statement when you think about the words. Listen to this. Just go out, listen to it, and God bless Judas Priest. Metal God bless Judas Priest. There, there we did. go. There we go. There yeah, he's in the band. He did. He, he blesses them with his leather clad holiness. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. <laughs> we are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. It is also on our channel, up in our banner in the bottom right hand corner. But if you are looking for Thralls Metal stuff, you have to go to thrallsmetal.com. We have new shirts. We have old shirts that are discounted, provided we have your size. And we even have hats, too. So if you're looking for any of that stuff, click the link down below. As always, tons of stuff going on at Thralls of Metal. While it's been a killer year thus far for albums, the month of March is stacked. Mm. You're going to want to tune in to pretty much everything that happens in the month of March on Thralls of Metal because there are tons and tons of awesome albums coming out. Uh, beyond that, though, we've got collection updates. We've got Nick States of Metal. Watch John Jammin will make a return here soon. The next ranking, of course, is the Almighty Meshuggah, which is going to be crazy. Really, though, we do all this because of you guys. I know we say this all the time. I know it's at the end of every video, but as time goes on for Thralls of Metal, we mean it more each and every time when we say thank you. Thank you to all of you who continue to tune in and support us. It is crazy. It means the world to us. This has become such a monumental thing, I think, in all of our lives. Thralls of Metal is bigger than I think any of us ever really thought it would be, and it's all in part to you, and we thank you. Yeah, I never thought it was going to get this big, but, nope. I mean, 
now doing this, you know, like, I, I wouldn't mind doing this into my 70s if I'm as cool as Rob Halford, which I'm totally not. I'm not even fucking close. Not at all. No. Not, not, you know, not even, not, like, no. Not even in the same zip code. Mm-mm. But uh, it's been an absolute blast, and you guys are large in part the reason why it has been. So one more big thank you, and we will catch you later. Yeah!